Hi everyone, John De Natale here from Equi Wealth. Really looking forward to uh, sharing some time with you and Prosper. Uh, talking today about how to create a fantastic financial future for yourself and live a wonderful life along the way. Because as we say at Equi Wealth, life is for living. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, we've brought in the financial advisor, John. John, how are you doing, my friend? Very well, Prosper. How are you? Thanks very much for having me along. Fantastic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, obviously, if you're watching this show, you know that our ethos and our motto is to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And in the process of you having a business that's profitable, what are you going to be doing with all that money and how are you going to retire with dignity? Now, that's the reason why we bring in experts like John that are well-versed in the whole financial wealth creation industry so that they can give us the steps needed um, you know, for us to actually create a path to our own wealth so that we can be, do, and have, first of all, businesses that are profitable and enjoyable, and second of all, happier existence now thank you so much for sharing your time with us uh, today john tell us a little bit about um your business equi wealth and how it came about sure thanks thanks so much prosper look very happy to be here so thank you uh, equi wealth well interestingly the interesting that you mentioned businesses and building businesses because that's been my background for many many years i've worked with many business owners and entrepreneurs over the years to help them establish their business, grow their business and scale using methods such as franchising to grow all around the world. So uh, I understand the business and the business owner space quite well. Uh, and that's how Equi Wealth came about because I, I worked so long with business owners and, and saw them working very hard as you do when you have a small business um, and, and working very hard for many years, looking to sort of create wealth and a foundation and sort of financial security. But unfortunately for many people, it didn't work out that way because they failed to plan early on uh, and they probably left a little bit too late to really get their financial plan together. Uh, and so what happens is for many people, they say, well, my business will be my, my retirement plan. You know, when I, when I get to retirement, I'll sell my business for a million dollars or $2 million and that will be my retirement plan. But if you've seen what's happened with businesses over the last, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years, the barriers to entry have dropped significantly business has become global um, you know there's the, the competition is not just around the corner anymore it's all around the world so the asset value of businesses has dropped significantly and those people who did not have a plan unfortunately have ended up in a situation that's probably far from ideal from for them in terms of being able to stop working and and retire and live a lifestyle that they're going to be happy with so that's how equity wealth came about it was designed to help those people develop a plan create a, a strategy, you know, make it work for themselves and end up in a situation where they can uh, retire or work less when they, when they choose to and still maintain a lifestyle and do the things they want to do. Understandable. You are absolutely right about the bar to entry uh, these days because as long as you've got a, a pair of sweatpants and a hoodie, you can call yourself an entrepreneur these days. And it is actually a very sad fact that most Australians, not just Australians, but the world over, they will retire completely dependent on pension, um, you know, from the government for their complete survival. Now, how then do you eradicate that, um, especially for people that already are on a path to creating some sort of wealth for themselves? Yeah, look, it's a really good question. And that's one of the things that drives me, Prosper, because I, I've, I've seen what happens from my first-hand experience through my family and my friends and my associates. I've watched what happens when you don't plan for wealth creation and you don't plan for a secure retirement. And it, it's, it's not, a, not a great situation to end up in. Almost three quarters of the population in Australia still end up uh, fundamentally dependent upon the pension for their retirement income. I don't know if you've checked the pension lately, but it's it's not very exciting. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a few hundred dollars a week, basically, right? So that's not gonna that's not gonna give you the sports car down the coast with the wind in the hair thing going on like you see in the commercials. You know, it's just not gonna happen. So so for me, it's about helping people do a few fundamental things. One is get really clear on where they are now financially, and I know that sounds kind of weird because you go, well, surely people know their current circumstances. In fact, most people don't 
know their current circumstances to the level of detail that we would look at. Yeah? So most people don't know the structure of their loans, they don't know what they're doing with their superannuation, they haven't really looked at their debt structure and, and what's happening from that perspective for, for, for quite some time. They're probably not covered from a risk perspective, so they don't, don't have the right insurances. Um, so if something goes wrong, uh, for most people, if they're without income for a few weeks, they're in serious trouble, right? And so that's not a great position to be in. So we start with where are you now? And then we start to look at, well, where do you want to be? What's the, what's the plan for you a year from now, you know, five years from now, 10, 15, 20, when you get to retirement? What do you want? What does that look like for you? And then we build a personalised strategy and a personalised plan for each individual client. And then we work with them to make that happen over, over quite a long period of time, usually. Understandable. I like the fact that you don't have a cookie cutter sort of strategy, you know, out there because every single person is in a different uh, position. So when somebody is sort of thinking of coming to visit a financial planner or coming to visit you as a business, what should they prepare, uh, especially from on their own end in, in order to have the most out of your, you know, complimentary or um, a discovery session? Yeah, sure. That's that's a really good question. Um, really, it's just it's just the basics. It's, it's it's having all of your loan documentation, so you know. You know, if you ask most people, well, what loans do you have? What interest rates are you paying? Are those loans fixed or variable? Uh, most people can't answer those questions with any, any degree of accuracy, right? Because we all get the paperwork, but we tend to go, oh, that's a little bit too hard to think about it. You know, ten o'clock on a Thursday night, so we file it away. And uh, it, it, uh, it, it, just, it, it, just gets, it just gets lost. Really, for the discovery session, which is our first meeting with a client where we sit down and go, well, okay, what's, what's your current situation? What are, the, what are the opportunities in your current situation? What are the risks? And how can we manage those too uh, as best we can? It's really about just having all of your fundamental documentation. So it's superannuation statements, it's bank statements, it's uh, income statements, those sorts of things. Um, leases on rental properties if they're, if they're in the mix, share certificates, share portfolio information, any managed funds with the people investing. All of those fundamental bits of information that help us build a picture of what your current circumstances are. That's really all that's required for that first meeting. And interestingly, just whilst we're on that first discovery session, um, many people don't know what to expect in that discovery session because, it, you know, here's the thing that I find interesting. Um, but most people will go to a travel agent if they're going on holidays. They'll get advice on where to go, what to see, what to do, what not to do, right? If we feel ill, we go to a GP, right? And yet for our finances, which are a really big part of our lives, we tend not to get advice, right? We rely on, I don't know, what we read in the newspaper, what Uncle Charlie says, you know, we, we don't really go and get professional advice, generally speaking, for our finances because there's a perception, I think, that you know, maybe financial planning is for other people. It's for people who are already rich or who are, making, who are making more money than I am or whatever the case is. It's not true at all. Financial planning is for everybody. Um, and so it's really come along and let's understand where you are. Let's get a feel for what you want to achieve and then let's build a plan specifically for you to help you get there. Thank you so much. Yes, Thank you because, so much. Yes, because the barbecue advice the barbecue that we're receiving advice, every, every receiving single day... <laughs> Day. you know <laughs> uncle you know, sam telling me put that money under the pillow you know right um yeah make sure when you now have enough you send it all to the bank now coming back to that barbecue advice um a lot of us may be a little bit wary about coming to seek your advice and like you said are uh, just leaving it to when um you know they they sort of, sort of get wealthy would you advise somebody to come and seek advice, even if they haven't gotten enough money to even start saving, or would you want them to be at least be far ahead in their uh, spending or in their sort of net worth that they have, uh, you know, uh, within themselves? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I, look, I, I think it's a case of it's never too early. Um, the, the best time to get advice is now, basically. Um, if so from, from that thing of not being sure of what to expect and what, you know, to come to us. Well, here's what I will say about that. Um, any of those initial discussions that we have, there, there is no cost involved. 
there is certainly no obligation involved. So there's no, there's no commitment or there's nothing to be fearful of in that process. Really what we're trying to do is to understand whether we can be of assistance at this point. And if we can't, I'm more than happy to say to somebody, look, at this stage, there's probably not much value in you engaging with us because you've got some work to go away and do. Here's a bit of a plan. Go and do this, this, this and this, perhaps, if that's useful for you. And if you choose to at that point, then come back and we'll have another chat. So there's, there's no real downside, if you like, to coming along to one of these sessions. You sit with one of our financial planners. Um, they, can, they will give you some good value regardless of whether you choose to do anything with us or not. You'll get some good understandings, some good information, and probably much clearer on what your opportunities are as a result. So, yeah, I mean, look, there's that old saying about the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now, right? So... Uh, it's just a case of get started when you can. Understandable. Well, we grew up being told money doesn't grow on trees and obviously all that hogwash. How is a money mindset crucial in, you know, on your path to creating wealth? Yeah, that's a really interesting one. I, I like you, my, my financial education was uh, limited to non-existent, right? Um, uh, I, I like you, I, I was taught, I come from an Italian background and uh, I grew up on a farm and we were, you know, the, my parents were hardworking people. And so their philosophy of money was you work hard and you save, right? That's, that's kind of the philosophy of money to a large degree. Um, and whilst that's not a bad thing to start with, um, it's not going to get you through. And, and, you know, it's certainly not going to get you to a point where you're going to be financially secure because at, at any point that you stop working, then the income stops and you really don't have much option in terms of what you can do from there. So I think, I think we're not taught much about finance in this country. The, the education process when we're young doesn't really do us any favours in terms of understanding money, investing, leverage, creating passive you know, income, multiple income streams. We don't get that as a, as, a, as a youngster here in this country or anywhere for that matter, I guess. So I think it's important to understand what your relationship with money is, what you've been taught, what your belief systems around money are, and then how you create a, a plan that kind of takes it into account um, and, and works around that as best as possible to, to create the right outcome for you. So, you know, we, we look at our client's risk profile, for instance, we, we look at how people see risk, you know, um, and if you're very risk averse, you know, if you want to keep things very, very safe and very conservative, well, that's, that's quite okay. That's, that's your approach. And then we can, we can work with that. If you're a little more adventurous and you have a little more, um, you know, uh, desire to do things in, in a different way, we can work with that too. So I think it's good to understand your money mindset um, and how you think about money and then see how that actually affects the outcomes that you're achieving at the moment. Understandable. In the financial world, there's a lot of buzzwords, debentures, buy and hold, uh, all the things designed to confuse the layman. Can you just explain to us what good debt is uh, compared to bad debt? Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Look, good, good debt versus bad debt and, and maybe, maybe debt that we can live with, you know. So, so there's, there's good debt, bad debt, and then debt that's kind of it's in the middle there somewhere and we go, well, we just have to live with that for the moment, you know? So I guess generally that good, good, bad thing is that if you have debt that is actually generating income for you. So if you, if you have debt to invest in an asset that in turn generates income uh, and goes up in value, well, that would be generally considered to be good debt. Yeah. If we have debt that is costing us a lot um, and whatever we're buying with that debt is not generating the income, well, that's generally considered bad debt. So, you know, credit card debt that we go and buy, you know, five LCD TVs on and plonk the holidays on and the nights out and what have you, that's generally considered to be bad debt. Um, and then you've got the good debt, which is the investment stuff. The other one, maybe the one that sits in the middle is, is your, your mortgage, you know, your, your home loan. Because people go, well, it's, it's kind of an investment because it's going up in value. It's not generating income necessarily, but it's going up in value. So it's kind of tolerable because, A, it's your home, so that's a good thing. Uh, and B, it's going up in value. So it's kind of workable debt, but not quite in that good debt category, if you know what I mean. So I think it's important just to understand, you know, why are we getting into debt and how we will manage that debt? And is it actually creating income and, and, and asset growth? You know, they're, they're the, when you look at, look at any asset, there are three things we want, basically. One is for it to generate income. The other is for it to go up in value. And the third one is for it to save us tax. That's the other thing. So 
you know, having a strategy around assets and investment and tax minimization is the other key element, right? So if our debt is doing those three things, that's what I would consider to be really good debt, you know. Great. Among some of the services that you also offer, you offer self-managed uh, superannuation funds, um, which there has been a lot of talk about it and people are really, you know, the, the, the stigma around it is once you start tempering with your super funds, then you don't have a retirement. Can you just soften up the blow um, for us there as to what, what it actually, you know, entails to self-manage your own super funds? Yeah, look, it's, the, the legislation changed some years ago and enabled people to actually manage or take control of their own superannuation. Um, and then it changed again to enable people to actually borrow within their superannuation and get leverage. Um, so when, when we talk about superannuation, you, you're quite right. This is a long-term strategy designed to help you, you know, build a lifestyle of retirement. So this is not an area you want to take any unnecessary risks with. This is an area you want to be very... Um, cautious with and conservative with and, and have a long-term plan around how do we use our superannuation to continue to build wealth um, for the future. So self-managed super fund really is simply a structure that enables you to take control of your own superannuation investment strategy and, and apply that and manage it yourself. That's all it is. Um, so rather than have one of the big funds, the retail funds make the investment decisions for you, uh, you can make those decisions yourself and you can invest in, certain asset classes that are approved within the superannuation um, rules and guidelines. And one of the key ones, of course, is property. So people are generally buying property and putting property in their super fund to, to take advantage of the long-term capital growth and the income that comes from, from those assets. So um, that's, that's really all a, super, a self managed super fund is. It's another form of structure that enables you to take control of your investments for your superannuation. And, and make the decisions as to how and where you invest uh, those monies. Within reason, you can't, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you can't go and invest in, uh, I don't know, uh, a collection of vinyl records or something in your super, you spend a couple of million dollars on buying, on buying you know, hip hop records or something, but, you know, unfortunately, you can't buy them in your super fund, feel free to buy them elsewhere. But, um, yeah. you know, there, there, are, there are certain asset classes that are deemed to be appropriate for super, and as long as you stay within those guidelines and, you know, and, and arrange other sort of uh, requirements, it's, it's actually a very, uh, I think it's a very interesting opportunity for people to have their super work much, much harder than it generally does in the retail funds. It's something that if you have a, you know, um, a superannuation balance of sort of probably $130,000 plus, it's something perhaps to consider. I don't know. Depending on again, depending on your risk profile and your your plans and your circumstances, not ideal for everybody, but um, certainly worth something exploring. Understandable. There's always an appetite for risk, and you know where there's risk, that's where the money hides behind. It's something that <laughs> um, yeah. my dad would normally say. Okay, so yeah. you did you did mention a couple of words just while we wind down here? You did say you could use your super funds and purchase an asset class the most preferred one being, you know, property as you can leverage that as a deposit and then, you know, um, get it to pay, pay, pay itself off through uh, mm -hmm. rentals or whatever lent to, to yes. value ratio you might have on there. Now there might be new cryptic or new ways that people are trying to, um, you know, put in money, um, into the market with new instruments that are even confusing um, to to even <laughs> understand what's going on there. I would like to start calling them as cryptic um, coins that they are selling online. There, what's just your your take on cryptocurrency and all those things? <laughs> I'm refusing to acknowledge them. <laughs> Cryptic, whatever it is, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Just in case, you know what I mean. People are being lured into uh, thinking that you know that's that's where the future of you know the legal tender is is headed towards. What's just your as a financial person, just your yeah, look, take I, on that? Uh, look, I, I have to say I'm with you, uh, Prosper. I know nothing about cryptocurrency whatsoever. <laughs> I see it occasionally. I go, I don't know what that is. I have no idea, and I don't even bother to find out. Which maybe to my detriment i don't know over time but um 
<laughs> now, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to state my biases up front, as I always say to my clients. I, I believe that there are some very traditional asset classes like property, like managed funds, like bonds and shares and what have you, that have performed very well um, over long periods of time. Uh, in fact, there was a report recently, I think it was BIS, put out a report recently that said, you know, property still out, outperformed all of the other asset classes. So it, was, it outperformed shares. Uh, it outperformed everything else that was in the market that people could sort of invest in. So I still believe that's the cornerstone of a good investment strategy. So you know, by all means, have a share portfolio, by all, by all means, um, get leverage through managed funds and those sorts of things. But property is kind of the, the, the cornerstone, right? Um, and then, look, if, if, you, if you have the appetite for it and you want to go invest in cryptic <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> Llama farms or whatever it happens to be. I don't know. There's the, over the years, there have been so many different types of investments that people have gone, this is like the next big thing. Um, and, and interestingly, most of those things are now gone. They just they don't exist anymore, you know. But um, uh, property is still around, you know. So as I said, I'm happy to, happy to state my biases up front and, uh, and say that that's, to me that's the fundamental cornerstone of a good investment portfolio is to have, you know, some, some property in there and then use that for leverage. Um, if you look at the way the banks treat property, um, you know, it's, it's a favoured asset class from a financing perspective. You get very good leverage on it. It's, it's very stable. Uh, you know, it, it, it kind of ticks a lot of the boxes you, you would look for uh, when you're investing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. You, you know. I can't give you any intelligent answer at all or anything you know, that's, that's cryptic of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would have heard by the way I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know, man. Like seriously, I'm sure there are experts out there you can get on the show, Prosper, who could tell you something about that. But I'm not one of those people. I can tell you. I understand. Well, we've had we've had one come in, and he spent an hour trying to elaborate how. I think he 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 left off, um, uh, confused himself. But that's, that's a story for another day. Now, okay. John, I can't thank you enough for your time, your value, and your expertise. If somebody has been watching this show and, you know, is sitting at the edge of the seat, you know, really um, wanting to get a hold of you, what's the best way that people can be in touch with you then? Oh, sure. Uh, jump on our website, equiwealth.com.au, uh, or just drop me a line, jd at equiwealth.com.au. Uh, happy to talk to anybody. Track me down. You'll find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, all the usual social media stuff. So uh, by all means, come and say hi. Happy to have a coffee, have a chat, and see whether we can add some value. Uh, and if we can't, we can usually refer you to one of our associates, one of our uh, connections who can. So, you know, if, if you're looking to create a better future and, and sort of set yourself up a bit better, set the kids up, um, retire um, happily and live a, a better lifestyle along the way, I'm certainly happy to have a, a chat anytime. Understandable. Well, John, thank you so much for, yes, your advice and your insight on, you know, things that a lot of people take for granted, especially when it comes to finance, because it's always thrown in the too hard basket. And before you know it, we're actually making more mistakes than we are helping ourselves. And uh, especially elaborating on the super uh, self money super funds, a lot of people get really confused as to how they can um, you know, move on from, 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 from that. Now, if you're watching this, you would know that our mission is to make sure that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And once that business is profitable, you want to make sure that that money is working for you in order for you not to keep working for that money. All right. So that's the reason why we bring in experts like John that are well versed in their field and they do know a thing or two about what's relevant and what instruments you can utilize in order to be, do, and have a happier existence. Now, in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because you will be speaking to um, you know, experts like John that are more than happy with their time, with their expertise to let you know how you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. This has been Prosper. And John, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks very much, Prosper. Appreciate it. Fantastic.